So far, we've considered the stability of single input, single output, and continuous time systems, which are also LTI. And for LTI systems, we know the conditions pretty well by now, which is that the uh, characteristic equation, the characteristic polynomial, which is the denominator of the transfer function, uh, should have all of its roots in the left half plane. But what happens if the system is not LTI? If it's not LTI, then we don't have any theory so far to make a uh, determination whether it's stable or not. For such systems, it's sometimes possible to define a different stability criterion called Leibniz stability. And we'll study two criteria in this uh, that were both decided, designed by Leibniz. One of them is what's called stable in the sense of Leibniz, stable in the sense of Leibniz, of uh, L, and then the other one is what's called asymptotically stable. And for both of them, the intuition is relatively similar. Uh, remember that we had this discussion of, let's say that we have a system where we have, let's say this is showing the state space. It's a one-dimensional space space. And uh, over here, I'm showing <clears throat> the uh, control, the system variable, system output y, y of t. And <clears throat> when it is over here, y equals 0, that's your equilibrium position. And uh, what I want to do is to think about what happens if you're away from it. Let's say we are over here, then the system should try to push the straight trajectory down in that direction. And if it's over here, it should push in this direction. So if we can imagine a, the gap between the current position over here and the zero, so actually I should call this x because that's the state variable, uh, x equals zero. And if I look at the gap between the current value x of t and x of zero, which you can think of as being roughly like the error, we want that the uh, control should be pushing this in that direction. So let's make it a bit more formal. Let's say that we have some energy function v of x, where v is defined in an arbitrary way. But basically, v of x is going to be 0 uh, at x equals 0. So we are saying that v of 0 is 0. And, uh, and what we want is that if the value x is non-zero, then we are going to show that the energy function decreases as we move towards the rest position. So essentially, if I were to now redraw this picture, and I'm going to now, I'm going to erase a few things and illustrate the energy function. What we want is something like this. We want this uh, v of x to be on the y-axis, and we want it to be roughly like this. We want it to be sort of uh, declining in this and to get to zero over here and to decline over here as well. And we don't really care what the shape is as long as it's uh, declining. Uh, to be more precise, it could be uh, something like this. Let me redraw this. We could have an energy function that looks like it's declining, but there are periods where it's flat and then it's declining again and speed it as a flat. So in other words, v of x is greater than, or v dot of x is greater than or equal to 0. So as we do take the derivative of v with respect to x, which is the x-axis, it's greater than or equal to 0. And if that happens, then it's possible that the energy may not decline in the stay over here. But if v of x is always monotonically declining, or v dot x is less than 0, let me draw that properly. If v uh, dot of x is less than 0, strictly less than 0, then we know that we're always going to get to the point where x is equal to 0, where v is equal to 0. And we know that v of 0 is 0. And that's the lowest point. So if that's the case, then we are able to uh, essentially show that the system is going to move to the convergence point. So that's the. Uh, intuitive feeling. So now I'll make this more precise. So we want to start with a system where, which is in the state space representation, 
And in the state Swiss representation, I'll use the sort of simplified notation over here. I'll ignore the disturbance in the input. And I'll just look at this function over here. We have x dot is some function of x of t. And so this is just saying that the system can be described as a, a differential equation. And moreover, we want to make sure that the uh, f of xt equals 0 equals 0. In other words, if you're at 0, we are going to stay at 0. We have no reason for us to move away from 0. So we assume that these two things are true. So this means that the system is uh, stable at its origin, at its equilibrium, po equilibrium point. Okay. Uh, so, of course, if the system is not stable at its equilibrium point, then we don't have an equilibrium point. So this is almost as a definition of equilibrium. Okay, now we say that the system is stable in the sense of Lyapunov, stable in the sense of Lyapunov, uh, if it can be confined to a part of the state space that's not too far away from the stable position. And uh, we can say that, let's say that, uh, you say, we say that the system is stable in the sense of Lyapunov for this equilibrium point x equals 0. x, again, is, of course, a, is a, a vector. Uh, for x equals 0, if for every epsilon, so epsilon is a parameter that's given to us, there exists a delta, okay, and what do you, what, such that if the norm of x of t is less than delta, well, what does that mean? By norm, we just mean uh, square root of x transpose x. In other words, we're basically going to take the, the vector uh, vector x like this and take its transpose, so that makes it a vector like that. And we're going to take the product with that. So this is uh, xt, and this is x. So all this means is going to be x1 square plus x2 square plus, plus xn square and square root of that. So it's just the sum of squares of the components of the vector. So you're saying so it says that if this value is less than delta, uh, sorry, if x of 0 is less than delta, I should be careful. So x of 0, norm of x0 is less than delta, then for all t greater than or equal to 0, for all times, the norm of x of t is less than epsilon. So what we're saying is that we are given, for every epsilon that we're given, we can find a delta, and we can find that, uh, we, we, we say that x must be within a, a hypersphere with radius delta, and if that is true, then at all future times, the system is going to be bounded in a hypersphere with radius epsilon. So if I were to sort of draw sort of a sphere like this, roughly speaking, but this is just a two-dimensional uh, two sphere. So somebody gives us epsilon and says, here is epsilon. And can you keep it confined to epsilon? I don't want to wander, the system to wander outside of epsilon. And you say, well, OK, if I'm allowed to make sure that the initial conditions uh, are such that it is inside this ring delta, then I can guarantee that it will never be outside epsilon. So you're allowed to choose the initial condition to be somewhere in the space, anywhere in the space, not just zero. And uh, as long as we know that zero itself is a stable point, then if you confine it to some vicinity of zero, then for all future times, it will be restricted to not exit that uh, epsilon. So if a system was to start over here, and it went like that, outside epsilon, we'd say it's not stable in the sense of Lyapunov. Whereas if you show that for every value that's inside this delta region, you always are going to stay here within the epsilon region, then that is stable. So if you go from here and you kind of wander around in epsilon all over the place, uh, but you never leave it, then that system is considered to be stable in the sense of Lyapunov. Okay, so that is stable in the sense of Lyapunov for x equals zero. What about the other asymptotic stability? So asymptotically stable 
asymptotic stability means in the sense of Lyapunov, stability in the sense of Lyapunov means that uh, basically if uh, xt tends to zero, as t tends to infinity. So not only does it have to be within the epsilon ball, but basically we would have to also show that when we start when we start from uh, any arbitrary point that's within delta, we are going to actually get to zero. We're going to end up over there. So if, if you do that, then that's asymptotically stable as well. How do we show that a system is either stable in the sense of Lyapunov or asymptotically stable? To do that, we have to use what's called a Lyapunov function, a Lyapunov energy function, which is often denoted as uh, V of X, as I, as I did earlier. Lyapunov function V of X. And V of X can be arbitrarily defined. And what we want to do is essentially for V of X be chosen such that we get uh, we, we, the, that the energy function declines over time. And so we are going to dissipate the energy over time. So more formally, given the intuition we already have, you have to have those form conditions. V of x of t equals 0 equals 0. So basically, if you're going to say that x is 0, then V of 0 is 0. And V of x of t greater than 0 if x of t not equal to 0. So in other words, if you are going to have uh, a value of 0, it gives you 0. And if you're, out, if you're not at equilibrium, it has a non-zero energy. So it has a non-zero energy at non-zero values. Non-zero energy at in, equi in equilibrium, equilibrium states. OK, so far, so good. We have two more uh, requirements, other than is that v of x is continuous and has continuous partial derivatives with respect to each component of x. So we want basically del v but del xi to be continuous for all i. So that's just a technical requirement. And then we want dv x by dt is less than or equal to 0 for all system trajectories. And tra by trajectory, I just mean the value assumed by x of t over time. So no matter what path you take, dvx by dt is less than or equal to 0. If this e less than or equal to 0 condition holds, then the system is said to be uh, stable in the sense of Lyapunov. And if dvx by dt is less than 0 for all tra system trajectories, then this is said to be asymptotically stable or Lyapunov 2 stable. It's also, it's also referred to as Lyapunov's 2 stability. Uh, or asymptotically stable. Now, this uh, definition has a little bit of a, uh, it's a it, it has two different problems. One is how do we find V of X? And so that one is a trial and error method. And then the second one is we have to show for all system trajectories that V of X essentially is declining. Uh, so what that means is we need to show for every point X, we have to consider the next point that it could be at. And that at the next point, we need to show that it's going to be uh, that the energy function either stays the same or declines. It's easy to th easier to think of it in terms of a grid. So let us say that uh, x can assume one of uh, different. So these are the, so let's say x has two components, x1 and x2. So it's a two-dimensional vector. And so now think of this being discrete for the sake of argument. Uh, the continuous case is similar. And let's say that we are choosing we are, the system is currently over here. Well, we know that. All the neighbors of this point are these ones over here where I put the little x. These are the all possible neighbors that this point x could have. So the trajectory must be of the system going to one of these possible directions that are shown over here. Now, if this point over here has some value v of x, all we need to show is that for all the neighbors of x, either v of x uh, stays the same 
or declines. If that's the case, then the system is going to be stable in the sense of Lyapunov. And if we could show that V of X is going to decline, no matter which direction you go in, then we know that we, the system is going to be asymptotically stable because in the end, you're going to get to the value V of X equals zero, where the value of the energy function zero, which is the equilibrium point X equals zero, zero in this case. So uh, one might ask the question, why is the system not at zero, zero? That's because of disturbances. So what we need to show is that the system was initially over here. It got bumped to, let's say, that state over here. And then the effect of control will be to essentially make sure that it never explores this part of the space, the further away part of the space. It always goes to a trajectory that is pushing it towards back to zero, zero. And as long as we can show that for any point, the next step in the trajectory due to the control is to get it to reduce the energy function, we will actually find that the system is stable. So this is uh, mathematically actually quite challenging. Uh, and uh, again, in this course, we'll just be looking at the intuition rather than the details.